are you gonna do? Knock my block off. Punch! I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what kind of video to make. Uh, I didn't know if I wanted to do an analog horror or a creepy pasta, and I feel like I don't want to just flood the channel with that. So I came across an idea that I haven't done. I've seen a few of these videos, but I figured I'd do my own spin on it, and I think it'd be pretty interesting. So this is a slasher villain tier list. The ghost face, the art, the clowns, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, all of them. We're going to see if we would ever be able to survive in one of these movies. Now, I am going to say that we have to act as if we are in the movie. We can't use any meta knowledge from you know other movies or the way they, they end up meeting their end at the end of whatever movie it is. Wouldn't be fun and it'd just be like, yeah, I have a gun or yeah, I use fire. So we're going to essentially implant ourselves into the movies and see if we would be smart enough to counter these guys, take them on, take them down, anything like that. Now, I'm gonna do my best to uh, not let my ego get in the way, but it, it's probably gonna. So uh, you're more than welcome to comment that down below, but I would love to hear from you guys, see what you guys think, see who you'd survive or anything like that. So if you have any ideas like that, drop them down below and let's get started on this. So we have at the top, shit out of luck. So obviously pretty self-explanatory. You're not facing these guys. You're not gonna take them on. You have no hope of winning. Below that, we've got Tis Just a Flesh Wound, which if you have seen the um, Monty Python skit, it means like you're gonna lose a limb, like something's coming off. Uh, it's a little bit of a silly little ha ha hee hee little gaff guffaw. I thought it was pretty cute, but that is what tier two is. Tier three, we have If I Have Prep Time, which much like Batman, if he has infinite prep time, he can take on basically anybody in any kind of medium. Below that, we have odds may be in our favor. This is more of a 50-50 kind of situation, something that we may be able to survive, maybe not, it's a coin flip. Below that, we have come on, dude, where it's like, okay, like we could probably survive. We might get scuffed up, we might get messed up a little bit, but nothing severe. We probably have no problem taking them down. Below that, we have do I have plot armor? And much like most uh, protagonists in anime, um, and Jon Snow in Game of Thrones season seven and eight, plot armor. Um, doesn't matter what's going on, you're gonna come out ahead. Um, might get into a scuffle, but no worse for wear. Below that we have, they're fucked. You are gonna have absolutely no problem taking them on. We're going to kick their ass. We're going to make them cry. Wish wish they had their mama. Okay, so we have Chucky. Now let's talk about Chucky. He's a doll that's possessed with the soul of a serial killer bad guy. Um, Chucky 1 and 2, he's pretty, pretty, pretty mean, pretty bad guy. Uh, he's very much like the Heidi kind of comes and gets you when you're least expecting it. I'm a really paranoid guy. So like I still did that whole run your ass upstairs uh, when you flick the lights off because I, it's that fear of the unknown. But with Chucky, he, that's very much his MO is kind of jump out and get you. So it's kind of hard to predict where he's gonna be, who he's gonna be with. Um, because we had that one where what he was underneath the dude's car, cut the brake lines and then fucking hacked him up. Chucky's a difficult one because obviously it's like he's a doll. How are you not going to just blow him away? So with him, I think I'm going to put him in if I have prep time. And that's only because Chucky primarily uses like little knives and uh, scissors, like slashing things. So he's got to get really close to you. So... If you have an ability to, to, you know, essentially space yourself from him, you probably aren't going to have a huge issue. And at that point, people have shot him. Of course, he hasn't died, but it's enough to stun him, lock him up, throw him in the ocean, whatever, feed him to something. But I think if I have prep time, probably a good spot to put Chucky. I could be wrong on this guy, but I believe this is the Invisible Man. 
The only Invisible Man I've seen is the fucking Kevin Bacon one. And uh, I think it was Kevin Bacon. Ooh. And with that, I mean, he's just a guy who's able to be invisible. So, I mean, they end up figuring it out. So I would say odds may be in our favor with this one. I, it's kind of a coin flip. Um, like if we get into a situation where we're able to make him out, like not even like high tech shit. Like if we just have like fog or something, smoke, anything kind of part of particulates in the air and he walks through it, you're going to see it. At that point, you have a weapon of any kind, you're probably going to be in pretty good, good odds that you'll beat him. Our next one, we have the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. Um, yeah, no, uh, you're fucked. You're shit out of luck with him. He, he's basically a, just a demon that comes out every, what was it, every seven years? Oh man, I'm gonna look bad. If you know the answer to that, comment it down below. But basically he's a guy that comes out every seven years and if you have what he wants, you're boned. He's going to get it. If that's a piece of you, he's taking it. If it's your skin, he's taking it. Much like Justin Long in the first Jeepers Creepers peeled his skin off and uh, yeah, that's, 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 you're not beating that. Um, good luck. All right, after the Creeper, we've got Candyman. Now for me, uh, I grew up with the whole, I'm not putting him there, I'm just setting him there temporarily, don't worry. So I grew up on the whole Bloody Mary in the mirror and with Candyman, you have to say Candyman, I can't remember if it was basically, basically the same premise as like you say Candyman three times in the mirror, but I didn't fuck with that shit. I was like, no thanks, no thanks bud. So I don't think I would be anywhere near this. I don't think I don't think that uh, I don't think I'd be even even close to this. So I think that I would survive just purely on the fact that I don't fuck with that stuff, and I would never go into a mirror and say Candyman three times. Um, if we're going on, he's already out after me, and I've fucked up and said it. <sighs> um, if we're doing that, I would say we put Candyman. Probably in Tis just a flesh wound. But for the sake of kind of balancing everything out, we'll put him in if I have prep time. Um, because it's it's the setup, you have to say Candyman three times and then he's essentially activated. And I'm not going to do that, but let's say it happens. I don't think I'm going to be able to take on the dude with a giant hook attached to his hand with uh, who can have bees come out and... Just, it's not fun. No thanks. No thanks. After Candyman, we have got The Strangers. And all I'm going to say about The Strangers is, come on, dude. It's, it's just like three people that are just people. And you're on, you're on home turf. They come to your house. So, I'm a gun owner. So, if a dude's coming up to my house screaming bloody murder... Or a chick, I, I'm trying to remember. I believe the girl runs up basically saying like car accident or phones or something stupid. I'm going to be like strapped. I'm not going to just be like, oh yeah, let me go follow you out into the darkness. I don't know who you are and you know, you're just randomly at my house. No, I'm, I'm coming strapped. I got my gat on me. The movie ends in three minutes. That's me. That's me though. Maybe you're different. Let me know. All right, now the next one... We have got the clowns from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. These guys are tough to like put anywhere because I just recently watched the movie and they really just seem goofy until you come to that one clown that literally punched that dude's head off. So, and I believe they blasted him with guns and it just didn't even affect them. So with that, um... I'm I'm probably I'm gonna put them in tis just a flesh wound because like they have the cotton candy gun that turns you into like it just like acid cotton candy that starts melting your flesh. So if you're not found, you're just dissolved essentially, and then they fucking drink you. No thanks. Um, they've got the popcorn gun that uh, the one time I saw them use it towards the beginning of the movie, it didn't look like it did a whole lot. It just looks like it follows you. So maybe, maybe I missed something, but I, I mean, if they're just like trackers and shit, it's not that big a deal. 
but they are aliens. They have technology that's not like ours. So I would say you're probably, if going up against these guys, you're probably going to be missing something. Something's going to come off and uh, it isn't going to feel pleasant. So yeah, tis just a flesh room for the killer clowns from outer space. All right, next we have the one, ha, huh, the only ghost face. Ghost face? They're fucked. They're fucked. Billy, Stu, all the other people that make up Ghostface, they're fucked. Because there's no way in hell... A, I don't have friends that are pieces of shit. I mean, pieces of shit like these friends and Scream. Come on. Um, but if I'm going to be serious, Ghostface in 1, 2, and 3, pretty menacing. Even though, um, you know, a lot of people think that he teleports and it's, it's not teleportation. It's just it's different people. Um, if we're going four, five, and six, they're fucked. There is no way. Like, I am not the person, like, in number five, where I can't remember uh, what's her face. I just remember it was Monica. Oh, God, from Friends. Uh, where she shoots him, he falls, and she doesn't double tap. This dude would have four bullet holes in the face. And then don't don't get me started. If we're gonna if we're gonna go into Scream Six, and we're gonna talk about Scream Six, you guys, if you've seen my short, you know how I feel about Scream Six. Do they have superpowers now? Like I know the spirit of Billy possesses his daughter, and there's it's some weird wacky shit. Like if they're gonna go down that route where it's like, oh, these guys are chosen to be the ghost face killers, and they're just super powered. Okay, they're fucked because I'm gonna I'm shotgun. Shotgun, fifth, just anything. Anything big, I'm not stabbing them. I ain't getting that fucking close. They're dead. I'm gonna kill them. Bye bye Yeah, and that's that's even with me being in the universe of like, oh my god, this person. No, um, not happening. The moment the ghost face killers, like killings are happening, I'm going out and grabbing a, a, a strap. Like that's not, I'm not gonna go around unarmed knowing that there is a murderous psychopath wandering my my city the fact that nobody did that was silly as fuck the only one that did do it was an idiot with it and she didn't double tap double tap that's all you gotta do pop pop in the face you you mess with the face and you go bye bye except this movie because he got in scream six he gets stabbed in the throat it gets twisted and he's alive <laughs> oh my god oh i got worked up Okay, let's move on. All right, next, we've got Art the Clown. Art the Clown is a special case. I have only seen probably two thirds of the first movie, which, okay, okay. You all know what part of the movie I probably stopped at, because that's fucked up. But, I'm go I plan on finishing it. It's just I had to stop because I was like, oh, that's a bit too real. Oh, that's a bit too real. But Art the Clown, I thought was just a guy at the beginning of it. And the clips I've seen, spoiler alert for anybody that has not seen the Terrifier series, he gets his head lopped off and he's just walking around like nothing's wrong. Like everything's cool, Leo. Um, he's not a guy. That's not a person. I don't know any person that can lose a fucking ahead and be walking around like nobody's business so i would say art the clown is a not human b you're not surviving if art the clown wants to kill you you're fucking dead like art the clown he's and he's gonna take the most joy in it he's going to peel off your skin starting at your feet all the way to your head and he, he's going to make sure it's slow and he's going to make sure you're awake for it. He's twisted. He's sick. And you're fucked. Like, that's it. In this in this universe, it blows my theory about Ghostface out the water. Because you can kill Ghostface. You shoot him in the face, Ghostface is dead. You shoot Art the Clown in the face and he comes back the next movie even more pissed off. And you're, you're, you're just, you're done. You're done. That's... Nothing's happening. So I put Art the Clown in shit out of luck because you're shit out of luck. And now we come 
to Pennywise the Clown. Um, now, I've seen both versions of it. Both of them, I thought they were pretty decent movies. Uh, part two, obviously, it's a little weaker. I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people think it is. Um, it just it feels rushed, I think, is probably the best way to put it. I think uh, Stephen King kind of wrote himself into a corner and was just like, and they win! When they really could have just made it a super dark story and have the ending be really grim. Like... I think it would have been better had they thought they killed Pennywise. He comes back, kills them, and then it's like, oh, shit. Is he going to continue on? Who knows? But knowing that you have this this clown that's coming around, he's he's killing people, he's eating kids. You learn about all the the, the ancient ritual stuff to come with him, that it's some, some Eldritchian god. I mean, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to put Pennywise, both versions of Pennywise, and if I have prep time, because if I have the ability to read up on it, understand it, come to know it, and then, you know, it's like, oh, hey, these people figured out how to, to, to stop him, and it's just making him feel real small, calling him stupid butthead poopy face. I feel like I would come to that conclusion, and again, I like talking shit. I've played Call of Duty. It's all good. That's So if I have prep time, that's where I'm putting Pennywise, both versions, if I have prep time. Um, I think it'd be pretty, once you have all the knowledge of it, be pretty easy to figure out. Okay, that's how you take care of it. All right, next we have Norman Bates from Psycho. Um, they're fucked. There's not really much to say about Norman Bates. He's just a guy who's like, he's a, he's a psycho, obviously. But, I mean, again, you don't as long as you don't go to his fucking motel, you're pretty much fine. And, again, as long as you go strapped, you're good. You can handle Norman Bates. I could handle Norman Bates, and I'm a fat guy. Come on. So Norman Bates, they're fucked. All right, now we have Leprechaun from the Leprechaun series. Um, With him, I mean, if I found a, a weird random gold coin and some little dude who's calling himself a Leprechaun is like, you have me coin, give it back, fucker. I'd be like, all right, man, here you go. My bad. My bad, G. Go on. Have a good day. Um, that's about it. <laughs> I would just give it back. Like, what the fuck? If I find a coin and then literally, like, a day later, there's this little leprechaun going around fucking killing people, I'm going to be like, hmm, maybe, that, maybe that's me being a little racist and assuming that the leprechaun wants the gold, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm giving the leprechaun back his gold. Be like, here you go, bro. I'll call him. I'll put out an ad. Be like, hey, Mr. Leprechaun, I found your gold coin. <laughs> so, leprechaun, I th I'm going to put in... Come on, dude. He goes right here in come on, dude. Because it's, it's a really simple way to just kind of tie up the movie in a few minutes. Is just give him back his shit. Okay. Now we come to Hellraiser. Now with this, it's it's kind of tough because A, I hate puzzle cubes. I'm not a fan. I'm not going to sit there trying to crack it. I don't care that much. So I would say if, if it's me being a stupid dumb pants, um, that's not going to happen. Uh, he's he's going to go into, do I have plot armor? Because actually, no, he's going to be the first one. Yeah, Hellraiser goes into, do I have plot armor? Because I'm not fucking with the puzzle cube. I'm not I'm not opening that gateway to hell. And that's just that whole movie wouldn't happen if I was the star. That's just that's just me. I'm not a fool. I'm not that titillated by a puzzle cube. So do I have plot armor for Hellraiser? If you're gonna bring up the fact that he's a he's a demon that likes to torture with pleasure or sadism, whatever the fuck it is, if he's already out and the puzzle cube's been solved and he's fucking around, it goes up to shit out of luck. Cause he's a fucking demon. Frank opened the box and got pulled in with meat hooks and pulled apart. Like, you're fucked. So with that little uh with that little discrepancy there. 
he would go into shit out of luck, or I guess all the Xenobites would go into shit out of luck. But if I'm in that movie and I stumble across this puzzle cube, it ain't happening. I'm not trying to solve it. I'm like, oh, that looks cool. Give it to someone else. Bing, bang, boom. We out of here. We ain't got to do it, fam. Okay. The next one we have is the Predator from the Predator series. Um, in that movie, he doesn't really go after just random people in both uh, Predator movies. And even in Alien vs. Predator, like, if he doesn't deem you a worthy target, he just kind of looks, they look past you. At least in Alien vs. Predator, which I don't, I don't care what people say. It's an entertaining movie. I had a good time, all right? But I would say if the Predator's here, if we're going based purely on would I be one of the people that he encounters, and yeah, well, I'm fucked. I'm shit out of luck. I'm shit out of luck. Because, again, I already said, like, I've got a strap, and I, uh, I'm going to assume that Predator would assume I am a threat at that point and if that's the case he's gonna hit me once with like the wrist blades or he's gonna hit me with that fucking blast and i'm just gonna turn into mist so predator shit out of luck you ain't getting out, you ain't getting out of there you ain't getting past it you ain't getting you know you're fine and i know before anybody says it in the comments even though you're probably gonna say it now because i'm already like 30 minutes into the video i know these aren't all slasher movie villains but Horror movie villains, slasher villains, whatever. It's one of those situations where, hey, are you going to survive in these? That's the whole point. All right. Next, we have the Xenomorphs. Um, yeah, it's not happening. Because with, with Xenomorphs, you don't have just Xenomorphs. You have the face huggers, and then you've got, like, the... Uh, what did they introduce in Prometheus? The fucking the dog-looking one, or was that in Covenant? I can't remember. Whatever it is... Even if you're able to kill a Xenomorph, they have acid blood. And if you're in close proximity and you decide, oh, I'm gonna stab it, you're gonna melt. Like it's gonna eat your face with acid. And if it sneaks up on you, which they're gonna, you get your face blown out by the little second mouth. And then let's say you're able to dodge out the Xenomorph. You're able to duck it out. The face huggers are the sneakiest little bitches ever. And you're fucked. Like, it's obvious what's gonna happen. You're fucked. You're shit out of luck with a Xenomorph. You're done. Okay, next on our list, we have Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, yeah, they're fucked. I'm sorry, Leatherface is just, he's an inbred hillbilly person with Down syndrome. And A, I'm not driving to a random house in the middle of fucking Texas. No thanks, that's not happening. And B, you have to have a weapon of any kind. A weapon of any kind. And you can take out Leatherface. Anything. You can have a fucking rock. And you can take him down. You just gotta bash his head in a lot. You might get tired. But, I mean, there's nothing really about him that's like anything more than an, than an average dude. He's not even like incredible shape. He's like a fucking... He's like me. <laughs> it's me in a fucking human face mask coming at you. Um, it's, is it scary? Yes. Would you be terrified? Absolutely. But there's nothing about him that is like like the Predator or Art the Clown where it's like, Art loses a fucking head. He loses his head. That ain't happening. You can totally take him. I think anybody could probably take him. And if you ain't got, if you ain't got like a rock, you could. If we want to add in the gun addendum, if you have a gun, they're, the whole family's dead. All right. And next... We have Michael Myers. Now, Michael Myers is a tough one for me because I've always thought he was just like a dude that he was just a guy. But um, the dude's taken bullets. He's gotten hacked up. He's had a whole town try to kill him and straight up 1v20 them, bro. You don't 1v20 a fucking town. Obviously, it's an exaggerated 20. I don't know if I can't remember if it was more or whatever. You don't 1v20 a town without having a little bit of that supernatural juice in your body. No fucking shot. So Michael Myers, if I'm not a member of the family, if I'm in the movie, if I'm just like a townsperson, probably pretty good odds I'll be okay. Because, again, I hear that there's a fucking dude hacking people up on Halloween. I'm out of town. So I would put Michael Myers in odds maybe in our favor. Because if I'm in the town and he's already going on his rampage, I'm I'm totally like boned. 
especially if I am like tangentially related to the family, like I know Lori or whatever the fa- whatever whatever whatever. Michael Myers will kick my ass. He'll lift me up by my head and he'll put me on that fucking meat hook, and I'll just I'll be sitting there squirming, and gravity will pull me down because I'm a heavy boy, and I'll just be fucked. I'll be dead. I'll get killed. And I think a lot of people would. You're not you're not surviving Michael Myers. This dude, this dude wears a William Shatner mask for a reason. Ultimate badass. Okay. Now we come to the final two. The two everybody knows and loves. The best ones, the ones that got me interested in all that spooky scary shit. We come to Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. Okay, so we're gonna go Freddy Krueger first. Freddy Krueger, because of the shitty movies, he has two weaknesses. He has fire as a weakness, and he has apparently mirrors as a weakness. Um, The biggest thing with Freddy Krueger is if you know about him and you're scared of him, that fuels him. So if you don't know about him, or you give yourself a lobotomy, or you take, uh, what is it? Is a heist, a hypnocell, hypnocell, where you basically don't dream, and I don't dream as it is, so I'll probably be okay. But everybody's got to sleep, and eventually you're gonna dream. And if that happens, you're gonna be just like Johnny Depp, and you're gonna get pulled into your bed, and a fountain of blood will shoot right all over the place. So Freddy Krueger, good old Freddy K. I think you're shit out of luck. Because if you're in that movie, if you're in Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, one, two, three, if you're in that area and Freddy Krueger, the the rumor of Freddy Krueger gets spread around and you look it up and you develop even an inkling of fear and you forget about it and you decide to go to bed, you're done. You're dead. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get gored in your sleep unless he decides to make you one of him like what was that what's that i think it was four where the guy like slowly started turning into him and then freddie like burst out through him it was it was dumb it was terrible but freddy krueger i think you're shit out of luck so freddy krueger bing bang boom shit out of luck we have our final contestant mr Voorhees himself jason what can be said about jason that nobody else has said not a lot. Jason's a big hulking motherfucker. Um, Friday the 13th one was not Jason. That was his mama. A lot of people don't know that who aren't horror guys. I'm the best, actually. The best horror guy. So you should like and subscribe, even though I definitely should have had a call to action like 28 minutes ago. But hey, whatever. You know, be dope. Be dope. Jason Voorhees is damn near immortal. The man has taken more bullets more hacks, more slashes, more dismemberments. He's had his eyes gored out by Freddy and he keeps on walking. This guy literally has teleportation. This guy is otherworldly. If I had another tier, Jason Voorhees would go on it because I love Jason. Jason's sick. Jason has some of the coolest fucking kills in a slasher movie. Like the one where he grabs the chick in the sleeping bag and just whips her around like Mario throwing Bowser. Whips her into trees and shit. Amazing. But Jason is an immortal being that can only be subdued. Can't be killed. The dude's insane. So with that, Jason Voorhees goes to the tippy top, move creeper, of shit out of luck. Now with that, Let's kind of organize these a little better. So we've, I want Jason at the top. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put Art right there because I would say Art is pretty close to comparable as far as like his weird demonic immortality. I think Creeper's good where he's at. Freddy's gonna go, no, Freddy's, I'm gonna put Freddy in third because again, the whole implementation of like, you have to sleep, and if you just happen to dream, Freddy's got you. The Creeper, I think that makes sense having him here in fourth. Predator, I think I'm going to knock Predator down to last and shit out of luck. Because again, Predator, they, they do have an honor code. The whole, I can't remember their race of people, but they do have an honor code. Xenomorphs, they just, if they want to kill you, they're going to kill you in any way. 
Uh, Tis a flesh wound, perfect. Um, if I have prep time, I think I'm gonna put Candyman at the top. He's almost to where you're just gonna get, something's gonna get taken. I think Chucky, I think old Pennywise, 1990s Pennywise is gonna go above new Pennywise. Um, I think Michael Myers goes up to the top of odds may be in our favor just because he is a murderous psychopath, invisible man, not so much or hollow man, whatever the fuck this is. Um, come on, dude, we're going to put Leprechaun up more because if you decide you're going to keep that coin, Leprechaun is going to fuck you up. The strangers are stupid. You know what? Strangers are going down to, uh, they're going down to, do I have plot armor? Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. They're fucked. I think I'm gonna put Leatherface above everybody else, just because that makes a little bit more sense. Because they are murderous cannibal psychopaths, whereas Ghostface is just like petty little douchebags. And then Norman Bates is just a crazy ass dude. Okay, that's the list. That's the list. That is our slasher, would you survive a slasher movie tier list? Do you agree with any of these picks? If not, let me know why. And you are welcome to argue with me in the comments. I think this is good. I like what I did here. Um, I tried to keep ego out of it with a lot of these because I'm trying to think of like, hey, if I was in this, how, how would I fare? I don't know, but you guys are welcome to let me know what you think. And if you have different places for these guys, I would love to know why. Maybe you'll change my mind on some of these. Maybe not, who knows? But if you've stuck around this long, please consider subscribing. And I do have channel memberships active, so you can hit that little join button to be a member. You get exclusive live streams, exclusive posts, and I usually will post videos about a day or two early, so you can get in on some of that action. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Please hit that like button if you haven't, drop a comment. And again, subscribe and share with your friends. I'll see you guys next time, and don't let the bed bugs bite. Bye.